This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for a beautiful online presence. It turns out that box making is a related skill and craft to bookbinding, and I haven't made one yet, so you're gonna watch me make my first one. I've been seeing other bookbinders make boxes on social media, from very simple ones to more complex ones with moving parts, um, hinges, and boxes that have very unique and special purposes. I have these overdue library books. Um, this one, Simplified Book Binding by Harry Gross, and Books, Boxes, and Portfolios by Fran Zire. Um, both of these books have box making tutorials in them and they uh, offer different methods so I'm going to try both today. I'm going to start with the simpler method which is to glue all the sides of the boxes together. They suggest that I use an existing box to um, glue them together so I've got this one here. I numbered these pieces um, in the order that it will be assembled so this will be the first one. Let's uh, glue these together. I measured this long piece to be the length of this plus the thickness of these two pieces of chipboard. The chipboard is three millimeters thick, so I added six millimeters to the length of the bottom. And that's how I came up with the measurements. And then the sides are the same width as the bottom. Oh my god. Nope. Okay, whatever. It's too late. I knew this part was going to be tricky, so I've got my tweezers here to try to 
even out these wrinkles. The glue on these tabs have already dried, so I have to find a way to like to put glue in there. Maybe with the tiny brush. Okay, I think that wrinkle is going to stay. A more precise bone folder would help with this as well. Alright, so let's work on the inside uh, lining and then I'll wrap the outside as well. Let's take a quick break to mention our sponsor. I'm creating a bookbinding resources page on my website where I can link some of my YouTube videos and other channels and blogs that have been helpful for my learning. I need something fairly simple and clear so I went with a portfolio page and modified their existing layouts. I was also having a lot of fun with these text and photo options. They recently introduced their Fluid Engine drag and drop editor which made building the page so easy and smooth. I'm so glad that Squarespace has everything I need to present my work, connect with my audience, and sell my books. After confirming that the mobile view looks good, the page is ready to publish. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com bittermelon. Thank you, Squarespace. Here's how the box turned out. I designed it so that I could fit pencils and pens in there. Um, I have a, an in-person market coming up, so I'm thinking of using this to store some pencils in there. This was not easy to make. It was very tedious to measure and cut 14 pieces of paper um, from the chipboard to the chiogami. And I followed um, the wrapping methods from both books. I'm going to try the next method now and that one uses one piece of chipboard.
Here's the second box. I don't like this one at all. As soon as I folded over the flaps, I knew that I would not like it. Um, the illustrations in the book look so good and it looks um, fairly doable. I think the chipboard might be too thick for this method. It didn't fold evenly and so the box is a little bulgy. Um, if I knew that it would look like this, I would have wrapped it in a solid color and then painted it because it's got a bit more character and if I hand painted it then um, I think it, that would have been a good way to embrace the shape. With this method I can be a lot more precise. The corners are obviously cleaner and um, as well as the jointing. It was good to try anyway. I needed to tell myself, commit Chanel, just finish it, trust the process. Look how this lid fits the box. It's like perfectly snug. I finished making the lid for this box last night and it's a bit snug but um, it turned out pretty well. Yesterday I was telling Elliot proudly that I made a box with a lid and he laughed. I think with or without context, um, it doesn't sound very exciting that I made a box. I knew that the Chiyogami paper would add a little bit of width to all the sides and so when I was measuring this top piece, I added like half a millimeter more um, to my measurement and it turned out just right. Um, and so I, I think it's the perfect amount of snug. Sometimes it gets caught. So the cool thing is now I can um, use this as a little tray as well. I also made a little trinket box and I showed how I made it on my Instagram and TikTok so you can check it out there. Now that I've warmed up to making simple boxes, I'd love to try making a box with a hinged cover or a box that can fit my books. Um, let me know if you want to see a part two. The sun just disappeared. I don't think I'll look at boxes the same, especially if they're handmade. I'm now seeing limitless possibilities of what these boxes can hold. Thanks for being here. I hope this inspires you to try box making yourself. I'll see you next time. Yeah.